Hello everyone, welcome back to Stewart Technologies. In the last video, I mentioned I was working on a new robot project. Well, that new robot project is a hexapod. Today we'll be working on the leg design of the hexapod. So without further ado, let's get started. Walking robots have been extremely popular over the last few years thanks to robots like Boston Dynamics Spot and Atlas Robot, MIT's Cheetah, and even hobbyist robots such as James Bruton's Open Dog. I've always wanted to build a walking robot ever since I saw those tiny little soccer robots playing on a field and when I saw the Atlas robot in person for the first time. But rather than following in everyone's footsteps and building a quadruped, I'm going to be building a hexapod. A hexapod has six legs as opposed to the four for walking robots like Spot and Open Dog. The hexapod's extra two legs grant the robot static stability even with up to three legs off the ground. This makes the robot perfect for traversing rugged terrain and using some of its redundant legs for performing certain tasks. Aesthetically, I just think hexapods look much cooler and more sci-fi looking than other walking robots. They kind of remind me of the Guardian Scouts and Guardian Stalkers from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which is one of my favorite games and franchises of all time. I'll definitely be taking some inspiration from that game and other sci-fi robots during my build. Now that you understand why I'm building a hexapod, we can actually start to work on the how by starting some of the design work. But before we do that, let me tell you about this video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay offers PCB manufacturing and assembly. You can order 10 two-layer boards for just $5, and new PCBWay members receive a $5 coupon off on their first order, which basically means you get your first 10 PCBs for free. Their PCBs are very high quality, and they offer a ton of different customization options for their PCBs. They provided me with these amazing looking all black PCBs from my robot arm and emotion lamp projects. They also offer a bunch of different services such as 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. To learn more, you can visit PCBWay.com. The link is in the description below. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Most hexapods have three degrees of freedom in each leg. And with there being six legs, that makes for a total of 18 degrees of freedom meaning that I need 18 actuators for this robot. Yeah, I know, that could get expensive and complicated pretty quickly depending on how I choose to actuate each leg. Robot dogs like Open Dog often use a combination of brushless motors and encoders for their actuators. The brushless motors are often used with some sort of output gearing to provide the necessary torque requirements to support the robot on four legs. Luckily for me, hexapods have six legs, meaning that the robot's weight is supported by two extra legs, reducing the torque requirements of each motor in each leg. The most common way to drive the legs on a hexapod is by using servo motors. Most servo motors will deliver the necessary torque and have built-in position control, eliminating the need for an encoder. Depending on the size of the hexapod, you might want to use smaller micro servos, like the one I used in the first gripper prototype for my robot arm, or you can use larger servos like the one driving the current gripper on my robot arm. For the sake of cost, I'll be going somewhere in the middle by using these standard size MG996R servos. I considered building a smaller hexapod using micro servos initially, but decided against it due to their lower torque and poor reliability. I may consider building a mini version of the hexapod at some point in the future, so if that's something you'd like to see, let me know in the comment section down below. The MG996R servos weigh about 55 grams and operate on voltages between 4.8 volts and 7.2 volts, drawing about 900 milliamps of current. It has an operating range of about 120 degrees and a high torque output of 10 kilograms thanks to its internal metal gearing rather than plastic gearing found on many cheaper servos. I ordered a small pack of four motors from Amazon to prototype with since I only needed three motors to drive a single leg. They came with a mixed bag of hardware including a few different servo horns that'll definitely be useful later when trying to mount parts to the servos. To drive the servos, I'll be using the PCA9685. It's a 16 channel servo driver that will allow me to simultaneously control 16 servos with only 4 wires through I2C. I tested the servos using the Adafruit library for the driver and boy is it a good thing I did. Only 3 of the 4 servos worked which is fine for now, but still annoying since that could end up costing me extra money on top of the already expensive budget set out for this project. I am never going to financially recover from this. For the leg design, I wanted to keep this as light as possible so the servos aren't too stressed during operation. For the first joint, I made a holder for the servo, and there's space in the servo holder for a press fit bearing. That gets attached to this bracket with an M4 screw and to the servo horn on the other side. There's another bracket that gets attached in a similar way to this servo right here, 
and these two brackets get attached together. These next two joints are linked together in this one linkage that form the femur of the leg. And the servo here at the end gets attached to another bracket and then another 3D printed piece that serves as the tibia and the foot of the robot. This design is just a prototype that will more than likely be changed as the project progresses. It's important to get this part of the design right since I need to replicate it five more times to build the complete robot. But now that I have something I'm happy with, it's time to print these pieces out and assemble them. After a few hours of 3D printing and some assembly, we now have the finished leg. To test it, I programmed an Arduino Uno to run each of the servos to a set angle and wait 2.5 seconds, repeating this a few times with different angles. By running the code, we can see the leg moves fairly fast and definitely has a decent amount of torque behind it, so much so that I managed to pinch my finger in one of the joints during one of my early tests. Functionally, everything works as expected, which is really nice considering how much time I spent on planning, designing, and fine-tuning everything. Since I'll be making five more of these legs for the full robot, there are a couple of mechanical changes that I want to make in an effort to help speed up assembly later on. First, I want to break up the end of the leg into two pieces so I can print it with minimal support, and so I have the option of printing the feet with different materials like TPU to help with the robot's grip when walking. I also want to find a better way to route the servo cable so things don't get tangled up during movement. And lastly, I need to source some better screws and other hardware. The ones I'm currently using for attaching the servo horns stick out way too far, and I've poked myself with it way too many times to count. I've already begun thinking about how I'm going to design the body and how the legs will mount to it. I also thought a bit more about the control electronics, and sticking with the Legend of Zelda theme I mentioned earlier, I think I'm going to try using an Android tablet as a controller, kind of like the Sheikah Slate from Breath of the Wild. I'm really happy with the performance of the leg for this robot. There are a couple things that can be changed both functionally and aesthetically, but that'll have to wait till next time. If you're a fan of my content and you want to see more exciting projects like this one, you should consider supporting me through Patreon. As a Patreon member, you will get access to behind the scenes posts about this project and others, and depending on the tier you choose, you could also receive a shout out in one of my videos or your name in the end credits of my videos. To support, you can visit patreon.com forward slash steward technologies. You can also find the link in the description down below. If you like this video, share it with a friend and be sure to like, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications when the next video drops. Thanks for watching. Shout out to new Patreon members Salty Steve, Angela Shaw, and Robert Davis. Thank you for your support.